Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. In this video, I want to talk to you about how alcohol affects our metabolism in under two minutes. So firstly, when you ingest alcohol or ethanol, hopefully ethanol, you turn the ethanol into acetyl aldehyde. Now this is happening in the liver. The acetyl aldehyde is turning into acetyl-CoA and ultimately the acetyl-CoA turns into water and carbon dioxide. Brilliant. In order to do this though, we need energy. Not ATP, but NAD. We turn NAD into NADH. And this is happening at each of these steps, right? NAD into NADH. Now what this ultimately means is while you're metabolizing alcohol, you end up reducing the amount of NAD available in the body and increasing the amount of NADH in the body. I'll tell you why this is important in a second. Now I want you to think about this. Your brain only uses glucose for energy, sometimes ketones if you need it, but glucose for energy. So when the brain goes to take this glucose and turn it into ATP, it actually needs a little bit of energy to do this. And the energy it uses is NAD, NAD to NADH, just like the alcohol metabolism. All right, but the problem is, because you're metabolizing alcohol, you've reduced the amount of NAD available. So you can't undergo this process of glycolysis. Your brain starts to get hungry. Now, other tissues of your body are trying to use fatty acids to produce ATP, but the same thing's happening. There's no NAD. So we can't undergo fatty acid oxidation either. So your brain says you are starving, tells you at 2 a.m. to go out and get a greasy kebab. You bring in all these carbs, all these fats to utilize for energy. But again, your NAD is too low. Now what actually happens is this. Because you've got high levels of acetyl-CoA from the alcohol metabolism and high levels of NAD, sorry, NADH, we produce fatty acids. And so what happens at the end of the day is you produce and store fatty acids, not use them.